Now, when doing any form of motorsport, it's pretty obvious, it's really important that you take a lovely set of tools with you. So if you have any problems, you can take it apart, fix it, replace, whatever you need to do, so you don't ruin your day and end up going home early. But what do you do when the issue is so bad that it cannot be fixed with tools? Something that's a bit more terminal, which means you've got to hang your head in shame and head off home early. Now, this was a big question for me at the start of the season. There's a lot of fabricated parts on the Super Turbo Micro. I really should have swapped these cars over for this video. Uh, but there's a lot of fabricated parts on the Micro, a lot of sheet metal parts that I personally have made. And as much as I have confidence in my own workmanship building that car, things do happen. Now, motorsport is really strenuous on a car, much more than you'd see on a road vehicle. Now, on a race circuit, you'll be in a lot of high grip cornering situations. You'll be hitting them curves, which will be putting a lot of excess vibration and shock into the chassis, and that will transfer into all the parts in the car. And as much as I've got my own confidence in doing all the work on that, you're literally one curb away from a boost pipe splitting or a weld coming undone, or you can end up with a backfire through the inlet manifold, which then peels the inlet manifold open like a banana. So for a bit of peace of mind and a bit of additional insurance, to ensure that we weren't the people going home early from an event, I wanted to take a TIG roll with us now. We have a few TIG welders here in our workshop. Now, it would have been quite easy to take one of the welding machines off one of our tables, chuck it in the van with the earth cable, TIG torch, helmet, tungstens, filler rods, everything that we should really need to do a field repair at the circuit. But ideally, we needed something that was in a box, on wheels, that was ready to go, that didn't interfere with any of the workshop equipment. So I had an idea and I pitched this to our very good friends at Artec Welding and we came up with this. So this is our Artec mobile fabrication station. So I pitched this idea to the boys at Artec and got in touch with Daz, and Daz absolutely loved the idea. Um, again, you know, this, this wasn't just for us, I wanted this to be for everyone in the Time Attack paddock or whatever events that we do in the future. Because there's nothing worse than a small bit of weld or a part that needs like a minor repair which finishes your day. Anyway, so yeah, this is our little box of wheels. Woo! Now this is version one of the box. We're gonna be doing a version two over winter. This is basically something we threw together in a quick weekend. I got our guy, Aiden at Vivid Wraps to wrap the toolbox with the Artec mobile fabrication station livery that's Artec blue and we've got their logos and the whole idea of this box was to have everything we needed inside this box under lock and key so we didn't have to disturb anything from the workshop to minimize the risk of forgetting something when going to a circuit so inside we have got our small bottle of argon Fortunately, that was the smallest bottle of argon I could get, so it's not in there in the most ceremonious of ways. We've got a TIG 170 EXT Digital at the back there, which was kindly supplied by the boys at Artec. And obviously, we've got a selection of uh, tungstens. We've got plenty of stock, so we don't run out. If we do need to sharpen a tungsten, we have got a anchor grinder, and we can sort of crudely uh, sharpen a tungsten that way. We've got our regulator, we've got our foot pedal, we've got a TIG torch, we've got our earth cable so everything in this box is good to go now the only thing not in this box at the minute is the new Artex Spiritus helmet uh, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until they release their non air fed version um, and we'll put that in here so then what happened is this goes in our race van 
our transport van for all the circuits then this stays in there full time doesn't get disturbed so if we forget to load a welder doesn't matter it's in the van it's ready to rock we've got gas we've got everything that we need to do a weld repair at the circuit so i did intend to film this video months ago when we very first built the rtech mobile fabrication station and we got rtech on board with the idea uh, but for many reasons it just didn't happen however because i am now filming it after the season's ended i can actually give you many examples of how this has got not just us for other competitors at the proverbial shite. So if you wind back your clocks back to Olden Park earlier this year, uh, I believe it was in the second session, we had some sort of weird backfire through the inlet manifold when I changed gear, uh, and that caused the inlet manifold to split wide open and cause a permanent vacuum leak. We ended up with about a six inch stretch of the sheet metal, which had unfortunately come away from the base plate flange on our the inlet manifold on the micro. But because we had the Artec mobile fabrication station, we were able to get the car towed back to the pits and we managed to repair the inlet manifold in situ on the car in about five minutes. Otherwise that would have been game over and that would have been our day cut really short. But again, thanks to this, that did happen. Now fortunately, that was the only repair that we needed on our car this year. But some other examples were Donington Park. We managed to get Barber Motorsports Evo back running again. They had a throttle body adapter plate, which was two flanges with a bit of tube joining the two of them. And the tube had come away from the flange. We managed to repair that for them and they got out competing the rest of the day. Now at the same event at Donington Park, we had Johnny Fletcher in his Astra GSI, who managed to pull one of his rose joints out of his control arm. Um, so it happened with the threads and it pulled all the threads out. We managed to weld that rose joint back into the arm and that got him out for the rest of the day. Then at Brands Hatch we had Dave Ward in his Mini. The back box kept falling off the hangers, the hangers weren't long enough and we managed to weld, it, it wasn't a very it wasn't a very pretty um, solution but we managed to weld a nut onto the end of the hanger to stop it falling off. We had Andy Forrest in his absolutely mental twin turbo V8 four wheel drive Westfield. That had quite a catastrophic tyre delamination, which uh, which unfortunately took a lot of the rear bodywork with it. Uh, but it also caused a bit of damage to one of the lower control arm mounting points. Now, um, I can't really take credit for the repair because Sam from Team Confusion actually did the repair because I got called out for our session. Um, but again, we used the Artec mobile fabrication station to do that repair. So yeah, all in all, this has been a, a very worthwhile partnership with Artec. And honestly, um, we can't thank them enough for getting on boards. Now we actually finally met all the lads from Artec at the Quick 60 and Retro Rides event at Mallory Park. We parked our car on their stand for the day and we got plenty of attention and got to meet all the boys from Artec get to you know put faces to names which was uh, really good and i can only say that actually strengthened down relationship even more so uh, yeah we're looking forward to working with Artec for the future we're not going to ask any more of them because they've already done enough i mean if you want to send us a uh, a non-air fed helmet that would be cool but also i want to redo this cabinet now now it's done its job for the year uh, and that literally is to have a welder in the box that has everything inside good to go but it can be improved and that's exactly what we're going to do now i'm not quite happy with the gas box situation uh, i don't like how it's in there now the whole point of having this good to go is that i literally want to be from plugging this into the wall from welding within 30 seconds and at the minute it's a bit of a chore you've got to take the gas bottle out you've then got to connect the regulator to the gas bottle you've got to pull the welder out you've got to put all the attachments into the welder it might sound like i'm moaning about a bit of a faff but yeah you, you, you're five minutes into setting up the welder and every second counts to get you out for the next session so i want to try and make this flow a bit better I want to try and find a supplier which does a smaller gas bottle so it fits inside. If I can't, I'm probably going to externally mount the gas bottle on the outside of this cabinet. We might even get another cabinet. I'm not fully committed to what I'm going to do yet. I'm going to put some filler rod organisers on the inside of the doors. Probably hang like an angle grinder and like tungstens and the gloves and everything on the inside of the doors. And the other thing as well is because of how the box is, 
Um, this is perfect size for our van, so I don't really want to go any bigger than this. But we've got to turn the welder 90 degrees and sort of like hang it out the front of the box to actually get change all the parameters on the welder. Now, I have spoken to Dazza Artec, who has given me permission to modify that welder. We've actually took it apart and the the screen on the front of the welder with the knob and all of the readouts for all the parameters is only attached to the main board with a serial cable so all we need to do to move that control panel is a longer serial cable so if we come out that on the front here somewhere or even on the side so we haven't got to take the welder out to change the parameters of the welder that'll be fantastic and that means we can leave everything plugged in like the torch the earth cable the foot pedal everything inside the box so all we've got to do is turn on the gas turn on the welder put the helmet on and get welding all within a few seconds now when it comes to field repairs i want to change this wooden top into a steel top and what we'll probably do is we'll weld a bit of steel on the insides so we can earth the table and then we'll probably go from that same exact earthing point to a secondary earth cable so if we're doing welding on the actual vehicle we have got to mess around and take this all out and then it's just other simple stuff like this chair and we've got this little gas canister wheel and casters uh, but it's a bit fiddly to put together so i'm probably going to try and get a folded chair and put it on the side so what we'll do from here is I'll go away and I'll start organising some bits and bobs to start modifying this cabinet into version 2 and then we'll come back and we will do a lovely video on those modifications and how we can improve this cabinet. If you've got any ideas on how we can improve this cabinet for future use, drop a comment down below. All advice we've taken on board. So uh, without further ado, I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank Artec for getting on board and supplying us a welder and all the bits and bobs. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, as usual, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, drop a comment down below, and don't forget to tell your nan about my filler rod.